Boozed and Confused is a comedy and weird topic podcast. Adult language may be used probably by me. While our episode topics may be educational in nature, we are not responsible if your children start dropping the F-bomb to their kindergarten class. Listener discretion is advised. everyone. What year is it? <laughs> I am Carol Ann. I'm dad. <laughs> and this is Boozed and Confused, and it feels really good to say that again. I wish I was drinking booze right now. I've missed all of you. <laughs> and I miss sleep, but I, I mostly miss you guys. <laughs> yeah, um, it is like 1045 in the morning, and I've, I'd say I've been up since like four in the morning. Uh-huh. And um, we're both drinking coffee, not booze yet. No fun stuff. You know what? I was really thinking about going to the garage and grabbing like a natter day. You could do that. It would just be like a pre-nap, you know, pre-game. Maybe, yeah. Maybe like in between cuts, I'll go to the garage and get a natter day. Okay. Behind the scenes moment. I got a beer. <laughs> um, and it's fine. not a natter day. That's it's not a natter day. Uh, the Three Floyds Zombie Dust, brought yeah. to you by my good friend Joe. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Joe. If you <laughs> if you hear, so, oh, that's definitely you can hear that. <laughs> so, um, update to the pod: uh, we're currently recording while our daughter Maisie takes a nap. Um, Donkey. And <laughs> we might have to take breaks here and there, or one of us will end up holding her while she sleeps. We'll see how it goes, but we're just, you know, fuck it. We're going to do it live. If she so. says anything offensive, um, she heard it from her mom. <laughs> and if you hear screaming, she's probably sleeping. She just uh, sleep screams. But don't we all in this day and age? <laughs> I know I do. All righty. Well, we're back. And... We've got an interesting topic for you today, but before we get into that, housekeeping items, because I just remembered that's what we do at the beginning of this. <laughs> I've forgotten everything we do, but <laughs> now that you mentioned it, I do remember. Um, um, like and subscribe. Um, follow my um, Instagram, uh, Boost and Confused. Uh, we also have um, a Snapchat. We don't have a Snapchat. <laughs> um you can do it. Okay, you yeah. You can do it. Okay, yeah. So uh, we are on all your favorite social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, not Snapchat. Uh, the only thing I use Snapchat for these days are putting Snapchat filters on our daughter <laughs> and then sending it to friends and family. Um, and if you uh, find some cool shit on the uh, social medias, you can send it to us and we'll probably repost it um would love to hear from you guys and if social media isn't really your thing but you want to get in touch with us you can reach us on email um, at boosting confused podcast at gmail.com the second one if you like the pod and you want to support us um we don't have a buy me a coffee um although i feel like that would be relevant these days uh but the best way that you could actually support us and any small pod that you listen to is by leaving a review and uh, following or subscribing on your platform of choice. It really does make a difference, especially if you listen on Apple Podcasts. Um, they have like a funky algorithm, basically, that kind of goes off of those metrics. So um, definitely recommend doing that if you want and if you do leave us a review and you take a screenshot and you send it to us we will send you some boost and confuse stickers for free we have postage now yeah you bought like a lot of a stamps thousand dollars worth of stamps we were home creatures for a while and then we ventured to the outside and we got a lot of things that uh that we needed to get so stamps are on the list stamps were on the list yeah uh, the last one is, what are you drinking? But I think I already you yeah, already covered uh, that. Originally, it was coffee. Uh, and then I said at the first pause we'd take, I'd get a natter day. And then I called an audible in the garage. And now it's a zombie dust. <laughs> Alrighty. 
for today's topic. Um, so recently in the news, you probably heard this report that came out that talked about forever chemicals in your makeup. And so today we're just going to talk about what's in your makeup. Um, it's a kind of scary as shit topic to me because I feel like there's a lot of unknowns about it. Um, so I don't feel personally very qualified to talk about makeup in the sense that I usually don't wear any. Um, and if I do, it's like concealer foundation. Um, I'm not good at matching tones, so I'm pretty sure everything is too orange for my face. And I just walk outside looking like a fucking Oompa Loompa. And that's fine. Like you're British. And uh, <laughs> and everyone is just too nice to really say anything. So, uh, so you know, the cycle continues. Um, but I want to just have a chat about that story that did come out. Um, so it kind of surprised me because... I very naively assumed that we would know about these dangers already. Um, you know, like women used to wear makeup and use skin products that had like lead and arsenic and mercury and radium. Shout out to our episode on the radium girls. <laughs> so that's a throwback. That is a throwback. Um, but it turns out that in our search for safer ingredients to use in our makeup products, um, we've just inadvertently created products that are still dangerous but for other reasons yeah um and you know me myself as an avid wearer of makeup <laughs> yeah um, i'm very <laughs> invested in this episode and have lots of questions and concerns yes yes uh so let's give a little bit of context first so the main concern that's found are pfas or god i'm, I'm gonna butcher this because i i don't deal with this at all um but pear and uh, polyflora, fluoro, alkyl, jeez. Right, yeah. Yes. Polyfluoro alkyl. Uh, substances. Yeah. I'm, I'm never going to repeat that word, so from here on out, it's just going to be PFAS. Um, so WBUR uh, has this like amazing article that kind of talks about PFAS in a very general sense and why you should be concerned. We'll link that article in the show notes, like always. Um, but there's like a TLDR that I would give and it's that there's around 4700 chemicals in the PFAS family and they all have two things in common. They're all man-made. They contain linked chains of carbon and fluorine and the bond between carbon and fluorine atoms is one of the strongest in nature. Um, so that means that PFAS uh, don't degrade easily. They stick around in the human body and the environment for a long time and they're very stable in water and that's why they're called forever chemicals. So you can keep looking good for longer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's the science as I'll get today. And uh, really, I just copied that word for, for word from that WBUR article, um, just so I didn't fudge any of the facts up. Um, so that's all fine and dandy, you know. But where did PFAS come from? How did we create them? Um, so they were made in the 1930s for use in consumer products. And they're actually like rampant throughout all the products that we use today. Um, so if you think about things like paper food packaging, um, specifically like microwave popcorn bags and pizza boxes, um, stain proof rugs, waterproof clothing, um, there's like, you know, some types of dental floss and then nonstick cookware. Is there any word on like spit up proof clothing? <laughs> I'm pretty sure every article of clothing I own is is currently um, spit absorbent. <laughs> it's very absorbent. It's not uh, resistant though. Yeah. Um, and actually, I used to love microwave popcorn. Just a complete sidebar. Used to love microwave popcorn. Um, and then I think when I heard about this in the popcorn bags, I was like, oh, that's not. That's not great. That doesn't sound great. So I stopped eating it. And then I was talking to my dad, like, hmm, I don't know, maybe a few months ago. And I brought that conversation up. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's why I haven't eaten microwave popcorn in probably a decade. And I was like, why? Why did you know this and not stop me or tell me or educate me? That's fine. Right. And then I remember you bought a popper or like you picked it up from someone's basement and then I looked at it and it was, it was like, it was, moldy. It was super moldy yeah. because it was in someone's flooded basement. Yeah. 
Yeah. So somebody was like giving away a free popcorn maker that they said like had never even been opened. And they're like, oh, the box has some water damage. And like, fact, it did have some water damage. But then we opened it up and it was like black mold on the inside of the popcorn maker. So threw that out real quick. <laughs> yeah. So didn't even bring that in the house. Nope. <laughs> That's fine. So we haven't had popcorn in a while. Um, so getting back to the PFAS and this WBUR article, so they lay out that there's two PFAS chemicals that you're most likely to have heard about. I am going to absolutely butcher this. Um, you know what? I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. There's PFOA. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I got this. I went to college for this. <laughs> they, they taught you this in your English class? Yeah. I guess technically. <laughs> Sound it out. Okay. Per... Fluor, <laughs> come on, perfluoror octaniac, octaniac. Ooh, Ooh yeah. no, 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 almost. Perfluoro octanoic. The O I C messes me. Oic. Pentatoic. Okay, so it's P F O A and P F O S. P F S O A. No, 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 Per perfluorooctane sulfonate that one is a lot that easier. one's that one's easy so something important that i just want to point out about these two pfas pfas geez i'm gonna lose my mind this episode two pfas um the pfoa and pfos uh they're not made in the u.s anymore so manufacturers started phasing them out in the early 2000s um but that doesn't really mean that uh you know they're not still made in other countries and then imported into the U.S. So um, pretty important, I think, to if that's a concern of yours, um, to maybe check on on the products that you that you buy regularly. Um, but what's interesting is because we had been manufacturing these for essentially decades, these two specifically are the most widespread in the environment, the most studied and the best understood for that reason. The scary part of all of this that I I feel is because the manufacturers phased out PFOA and PFOS with other members of the PFAS family, um, we don't really know what these new like next generation PFAS do or the effects that they have, and that kind of scares me. The effects are it makes you pretty. <laughs> Well, depending on the product, yes. But you know what's really more important than beauty on the outside? What? Cancer on the inside of <laughs> PFAS? I was going to say, like, the heart and soul, but oh, I mean, yeah. if you're going to yeah. be all macabre. Um, so, if these are so common, like, what does it really matter? I know, I know people who personally say, like, or joke like oh everything gives you cancer these days so i'm just gonna you know go with it and th i feel like there's some truth to that honestly yeah, especially in california well california has very strict rules on products that need to be labeled um containing certain uh like chemicals or you know ingredients whatever that it's like the prop five i think warning yeah um so I don't know. It's it's interesting, but it turns out that it really matters a lot, actually, and you guys should probably be concerned about these. So going back to that WBUR article, um, the next little blip that I have is just going to be a direct quote from there. Um, studies estimate that 98% of Americans have detectable levels of PFAS in their blood. Oh. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. Yeah, no thank you. Scientific studies have provided strong evidence leaking PFAS exposure to elevated cholesterol, thyroid disease, damage to the liver and kidneys, effects on fertility, and low birth weight, according to Shader, who's like this person um, most quoted in the article. Research also suggests that exposure to PFAS chemicals might suppress the immune systems of young children, potentially making vaccines less effective. Oh, we've just been... Getting all up into vaccines. Oh, yes. And finally, um, again from this WBUR article, 
Some studies also suggest an elevated risk of testicular and kidney cancer in people exposed to higher levels of PFAS. Scientists are less certain about the health effects of newer PFAS compounds that replaced PFOS and PFOA and the effects of low-level exposure. Despite the remaining uncertainty, scientists have found that PFAS chemicals affect every major organ in the human body. We're basically just killing ourselves. <laughs> you know, I was just watching some like super old school um, like interview. It was like uh, we got Discovery Plus. So it was Ooh, like, highly recommend. Actually, it's like one of the only streaming services I think is worth it. Well, all you do is watch like shut the up, flip shut flop, up, shut up. good bones, <laughs> et, cetera, et cetera. I've been keeping it light in the house for well, anyone who's ever had a kid. You know, the postpartum period fucking sucks. And you just want to keep things light. So you just watch a lot of HGTV, a lot of trashy TLC shows. So yeah, don't at me. Well, on the other hand, I'm only watching alien stuff. <laughs> um, and there was this really old commercial where the guy, and I was at a commercial, it was, it was like an interview. Uh, and the announcer was like, uh, I am blah, blah, blah. He is blah, blah, blah. And the cigarette is a camel. And it's like, I was kind of like laughing at like, ah, ha, ha. Everything was so badly made back then and no one even knew it. Ha ha. As I like (laughs) take a sip of my fake LaCroix. Yeah. God, if they ever come out that like, um, you know, like the LaCroix or, or, um, you know, the generics of it are bad for you, I think we're screwed. But anyway, so hopefully maybe that like all scared you into never eating microwave popcorn again. I don't know. Who knows? Um, but now that we've kind of given the the background of PIFAs, let's talk about your cosmetics. Um, so I, I didn't know this, uh, and this whole thing was actually kind of mind-blowing to me, but apparently cosmetics in the U.S. and Canada have never been tested for PIFAs before, like ever. So okay. this report that came out is like the first screening of its kind. Um, the final report was released in mid-June this year, so I think just like a couple weeks ago. And just a high-level overview of what they found. 52% of over 200 tested products had high fluorine concentrations, suggesting the presence of PFAS. And waterproof mascaras, liquid lipsticks, and foundations were especially likely to contain lots of fluorine, which is not great. So, more details on that. Um, This whole blip that I have uh, next is from Smithsonian (laughs) Smithsonian Magazine. Um, So, the University of Notre Dame researchers tested 231 frequently used makeup products, including liquid foundation, concealer, blush, lipsticks, mascara. Here's the part that scares me. Approximately 82% of waterproof mascaras, 63% of foundations, and 62% of liquid lipsticks contained at least 0.384, what is that? Micrograms. <laughs> Micrograms of fluorine per square centimeter of product spread out. Um, after analyzing 29 cosmetics containing the highest amount of PFAS, these products were found to contain four chemicals that further break down into other highly toxic PFAS, such as, oh gosh, here it is again, perfluorooctanic acid, the PFOA, <laughs> uh, which can cause cancer and low infant birth rates. Weights. Weights. Oh my gosh. Guys, don't, don't be sleep deprived in pod. <laughs> You're doing much better than I am, I think. That's fine. No, you know what? No, no, because when I was younger, I would be up that late normally, just goofing around. Uh, You're rearranging my Pokemon deck. (laughs) Yeah, I might have rearranged my entire collection of Pokemon cards by type. Uh, Recently or when you were (laughs) younger? This was like three days ago. This was like three days ago. (laughs) No, but now, now I'm just up just trying to keep the donkey quiet yeah the donkey is Maisie we love her so much she's a great baby actually and like the only complaint that we have is she just like doesn't fucking sleep at night which is normal for a newborn and we're getting through it and it's fine um all right so you may hear all this and think wow boozed and confused Matt and Carol Ann and Maisie uh, executive producer 
it's really fucking scary. And I like to avoid these products. Same. Because I we there's another pod that we listen to called Stuff They Don't Want You to Know. They did an episode about uh, sunscreen and how like some sun, some sunscreens might actually be worse for you than like the actual like outweighing of benefits if that makes sense did i did i word that correctly yeah the um the side effects of sunblock are worse than the detriments of a sunburn yes yes because you know depending I, on the sunscreen yeah you know, i just got sunburned and i i begged to differ it was the back of my leg oh, it yeah. was like the back of my knee only my calves and i was wearing like like medium length socks so it was like just one big chunk i was like i was like a candy cane yeah and then like the back of my arms it wasn't even like <laughs> it was just like like the back and Hot boy. everything hurt <laughs> everything hurt and i don't know if i really hate being sunburned and then having a you know a really bad farmer's tan and my freckles just stop at one point yeah i, I don't they, know they do hot boy candy cane summer <laughs> there's <laughs> no it's um isn't a hot hot dad now because I'm a dad. Hot, yeah. hot dad, candy cane, freckles boy, summer. Wow, that's really long and uh, not rolling off the tongue. I'll the we'll work on it. it. <laughs> Me and all my homies who are dads know what I'm talking about. Oh, all right. So, yes, this is scary. Um, and you probably want to know what products were tested. However, it's tricky. Uh, at the moment, it's not known... What brands or what products were found to have had the PFAS? But we do know the study's authors tested cosmetics made of um, tons of brands like L'Oreal, Ulta, MAC, CoverGirl, Clinique, Maybelline, Smashbox, NARS, Estee Lauder, and more. And the products were found in stores like Ulta, Sephora, Target, Bed Bath & Beyond. Uh, And um, here's... Here's the part that I think is pretty fucking scary. And I would not be shocked if this changes in the future. In 88% of all tested products, the label did not disclose PFAS to the consumer, making it impossible to avoid the toxins. So you could be putting this in your body and not even fucking know it because it's not disclosed. Um, however, okay, so here's, here's like a, a, a guiding path, maybe I'll say. The study found that fluorine was often present most in products advertised as wear-resistant, long-lasting, and waterproof. So it's really those products that are meant to be like the all-day wear um, or like smudge-proof, you know, whatever. Um, Those you might want to start to avoid. I personally will probably never buy a waterproof mascara ever again. You know what? I'm going to continue to not buy (laughs) waterproof mascara for for myself. Good for you. Um... The concerns with PFAS and makeup aren't just that you're ingesting them, because also, like, think about it. You're putting this into your body. It's getting absorbed one way or another, especially, um, you know, like your lipsticks. You're ingesting these products. And there are serious concerns that these chemicals could be washed down the drain and end up in drinking water as well. And there's like a, a whole other episode that we could do about PFAS and drinking water because it's a huge topic. Um but if it interests you, we're not going to get into it right now because it's massive. But if it interests you, do a quick Google search on the Google. Uh, you know, get your toes wet. No pun intended. Um, and just read about it. I think PFAS are something that are going to be in the news a lot over the next decade um, as they start to find out more about these, uh, you know, different not strains. What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah. Chemicals. <laughs> the, the the PFO, not the PFO, A's. Gosh, I, I can't I can't think straight. But um, as you know, they start to learn more about the actual effects of these these newer chemicals that are being used in products. Or it might go the route of like um, chocolate and wine on the news where like one week it's like oh yeah (laughs) worst thing you can do to your body is eat chocolate and drink wine yeah and then like next week it's like do you want to live forever drink wine another behind the scenes moment Maisie uh woke herself up because she was (laughs) oh she she just crapped herself it smells (laughs) it smells like baby but also like poop so, so Matt's holding her just so she doesn't start 
crying again, but um, if you hear any flatulence in the background, it's just the baby. Also, Matt's holding her very close to the mic, <laughs> so if you hear baby grunts, um, it's it's the baby and, and not Matt. All right, so anyways, <laughs> what's next after this report? Um, there were already two bells actually introduced to the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just looking across the table and there's Maisie, like she's going to speak her mind about something. All right. So two bills have already been introduced to the U.S. Senate regarding the issues that were found in this report. Um, from Business Insider, uh, the No PFAS in Cosmetics Act and the Personal Care Product Safety Act would amend the FDA to have further regulatory power over the chemicals used in cosmetic products. The No PFAS in Cosmetics Act would ban the intentional use of PFAS in cosmetics. Um, the Personal Care Product Safety Act would require companies to submit their ingredients to the FDA, allowing the agency to determine potential health risks. Both of these sound great to me. What are you laughing about? I got nothing. The baby. <laughs> it's just, just the baby. Oh gosh, we're both running on on um, not even not even like empty fumes at this point. What's next after empty fumes? You just you just die. <laughs> I think. I think so. <laughs> so, um, if you are serious about wanting to avoid cosmetics with PFAS in them, there are some some routes you could take. I don't think at this point it's possible to entirely eliminate them from the products that you use solely because if it's not um, even listed on the product itself, it's probably hard to figure that out. Um, And even if you don't wear makeup, you know, going back to uh, the thing about sunscreen we said, like there are other beauty products or like personal care products that you probably use that contain PFAS that you, you just won't know. So unless you just live like a naked Neanderthal in your house and you don't use anything ever, um, except maybe like a homemade mix of like baking soda and vinegar. um, Does that work to walk the sun? I don't know. (laughs) I've just been wearing long sleeves like all summer. Yeah. Long sleeve summer. Except for that one day I got burned. badly burned. But to be fair, it was like raining the whole day. Yeah. And I was outside for maybe an hour. So... Um, there, okay, getting back to the, the routes you could take, L'Oreal is the only beauty company that has completely eliminated the use of PFAS in their products, and that's something that they decided to do back in 2018. Um, so that's a route that you could take for beauty products. Um, Ulta and Sephora and Target have sections on their websites that talk about um, products with like clean ingredients. Um, so The problem with this is like for Ulta, at least it contains products that, um, you know, have PFAS in them. Sephora and Target have that similar sort of section, but it does not include PFAS. So it's just like other product ingredients that are harmful. Um, God, we have a lot going on. We have a cat meowing. We have a baby grunting. It's time to wrap this up. Lots of producers on the show. (laughs) There's too many cooks in the kitchen. (laughs) Um... The other route that you could take, which is a site that I actually personally used um, a lot before this because I had heard about like similar sort of things with like nail polish. Um, You could visit a website like EWG.org and this gives like ratings for personal care products that range from makeup and nail polish and skincare and baby products, etc. Really like anything that you think of in your day to day um, personal care life. It's probably on there. So I would encourage you to maybe just like look up a few of your daily products on EWG. Um, you might be surprised at what it contains. Stop purposely holding the baby up to the mic to enhance the grunts. Um, but you you might be surprised. So the other thing that I really like about EWG is it, it breaks down individual ingredients and then gives them ratings and talks about why they're potentially harmful or, you know, like what level of risk they carry. Um, actually, like, I think everybody should just look this up, even if you have, like, a daily moisturizer that you use or, you know, a body wash or something. Um, just give it a little look and see what's going on. I don't need to. I use Dr. Squatch. (laughs) Instagram (laughs) finally got me. I fell for it. This episode brought to you by Dr. Squatch. (laughs) 
Not really, but if you want to sponsor us, uh, that'd yeah, be fun I'd, too. Yeah, I would take some free bars of soap. It smells really good. Yeah, that's. Oh, we don't want a monetary payment. We just want free soap. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine too. Um. So yeah, that's that's actually all that I really have for today's episode. Um. I just wanted to do this one because I thought it was very timely, and um, yeah. I don't know. I wanted I wanted to jump on it before it became old news it's probably old news already actually but yeah well um i got next week uh it's gonna be about how um it's gonna be alien related i'm sure it's no 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 you're gonna turn into charlie day (laughs) with the you know (laughs) what i'm talking about with the whiteboard (laughs) um no it's it's gonna be about um fairies and how they oh yeah steal your baby and replace your baby with a like a crappy version and that crappy version behaves like shit <laughs> at nighttime only or all all the, the time? damn day well macy's a good baby so that definitely did not happen to us but yeah or did it that's that's all we have for today's episode i'm very happy to be back um with our new executive producer and we should be coming back to you regularly every monday uh on any platform where you find your podcasts yeah um i've seen the movie boss baby and we've had a baby for like a month and some change and um she hasn't turned into a like a suit wearing like business person yet so not sure that movie is actually accurate oh here she goes well i've got a baby with a diaper that weighs about 10 pounds um so i gotta go (laughs) All right, we will see you guys next week. Bye. Guess who's going to do the diaper changing? It's me. (laughs) Bye. Bye.